A big time fight between big time gyms. This weekend we have Punaheli Puna Soriano representing Extreme Couture taking on all in Brandon Allen. He's all in this time with Sanford MMA. This is a guy that spent a lot of time at Rufus Sport. He's made the move and I absolutely love it. Now, his former common opponent, but the fight fell out twice. In Ian Heinrich is also at the gym training at Sanford. You love it, especially in some of the higher weight classes. And we can talk about that till the cows come home. But both of these guys, Matt, have entered into the DMs. Well, not really the DMs. They've entered into the comment sections on YouTube. They've ripped us apart. They have. And rightfully so, because I've had weird reads on Brendan Allen. And likewise, weird reads on Punaheli Soriano in the UFC. For Soriano, he beat John Pati with LFA. He beat Jamie Pickett on Dana White's Contender Series. Then it's big wins over Oscar Piotta and Dusko Todorovic in his last time out. For Brendan Allen, it seems like he's been in the UFC forever. He beats Kevin Holland in the 5 on in He beats Tom Breeze. He beats Kyle Dox. He loses to Sean Strickland. And then he beat Carl Robertson his last time out. Matt, what can you tell me about Brandon Allen? He looked phenomenal his last time out against Carl Robertson, but it was weird because that was almost like another reinvented version of Brandon Allen that we've seen. And this is kind of the question that I, I guess I'll just leave out there. Is Sanford Brandon Allen like this new animal? Because he was there for the Carl Robertson fight. And I know we didn't see a lot of his striking in that fight, but from what we did see, he looked really good. And that's the weird thing about Brandon Allen. And I can kind of say a little bit about this, but put it Soriano, but let me get to that in a second. With Brennan Allen, it all comes down to his fight IQ. It really does. Because if you go to the Kevin Holland fight, I understand he beat Kevin Holland, but he beat him in the dumbest way possible. Like, he gets dropped by Kevin Holland on the feet, gets hurt by him, gets out grappled, and then is eventually able to out grapple Kevin Holland. Honestly, that win for Brennan Allen came down to the fact that Kevin Holland had a bad game plan. Let's look at Punaheli Soriano really quick, and let's look at his last fight. I understand he knocked out Disco Todorovic, and Disco was a prospect that a lot of people were high on, myself included, and Punaheli Soriano looked phenomenal in that fight. But did Punaheli look good in that fight, or did Disco just look really bad? This is the thing. It's true. Punaheli looked good in that fight, but he landed one technique over and over and over again. It's not like he set that technique up. He just couldn't miss his left hook. And it wasn't the fact that, oh, I'm going to the body, then I'm setting up my left hook, kind of like Stipe did against Daniel Cormier in their second fight. It was, I'm just going to keep on throwing the left hook, and my opponent's hands are never going to come up. This is the weird thing about Punaheli Soriano, and I'm going to let this out of the, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag right now. I don't really know how to base him off his last performance, because if you go back to the Oscar Payotta performance, well, Oscar Payotta was known for one thing in the UFC and one thing only, getting finished brutally by a lot of guys. And if you go to the Dusko fight, did Punahele look really good in that fight, or did Dusko just not really fix the defensive laps that we were so apparent from the first minute of that fight? So in this fight, this is the ultimate grappler versus striker matchup on this card for me, at least, because I really don't think Brendan Allen can strike with Punahele Sorano for rounds. I think he can do it for minutes or maybe even seconds, but I really don't think he should find himself in a striking battle with a guy like Punahele Sorano, who's as heavy-handed as he is so early in his transition to Sanford MMA. The last thing I'm going to say, Eddie Bravo said something that's always going to stick with me. He said, when I have a striker who comes into my gym who wants to learn jiu-jitsu, I don't tell him to pull guard his first fight with me. I use that six months that we have together to get him better at jiu-jitsu. I hope he doesn't have to show up for a couple fights, though, because let's say he wins the next fight and doesn't show his jiu-jitsu, then I get another six months with that guy to get a little bit better, get a little bit better. I'm sure Brennan Allen's striking has gotten a lot better since he moved down to Sanford MMA, but I don't think this is the fight that he should all of a sudden start going out and working behind the jab, peppering and body kicks. Yeah, because it didn't work for him against Sean Strickland, and that's the really tricky thing a lot of people are very down because of that performance and then flip forward you take on the glory kickboxer and carl robertson and he looked really good in that one i look at the odds for this one allen opened a plus 185 underdog he's minus 107 right now for puna soriano open minus 220 he's now minus 115 and it's not like that just jumped and then it's pretty much flat it's been kind of consistently going towards brendan allen if we look over in topology for the votes Hey, it's a surprise to us as it is to you. 642 total votes, 61% Soriano, 86% by knockout. For the 39% that have Allen, 51% by submission. And you talked about it. Grappler versus striker. Striker. Puna Soriano hasn't been taken down yet in the UFC. Nobody's even tried it. They've been willing to strike. And you look at the last two opponents... Dushko Tarorovic is not going to try and take you down. He grinds up against the fence. He does it in just about every fight. Astaquan. Yeah, Astaquan. Ask Teddy Ash. You look at his fight against Oscar Piotta. He finishes him violently. Jamie Pickett's a fun fight. For Brendan Allen, though, I like the takedowns out of him. If you look at it in terms of his numbers, Brendan Allen tries for the takedowns a little bit more than the UFC average. He also attempts way more submissions than the UFC average at 2.08. 
per 15 minutes compared to the average that's 0.58. So for Brendan Allen, he's offensive with the takedowns. As far as his striking, it's a negative strike differential. It's a big positive for Puna Soriano in his shorter sample size. I like Brendan Allen for his work rate. I like him for the takedowns defensively. Maybe short up some of those holes. But again, the red flag on this one is I've had like bad reads on both of these guys that both of these guys have pointed out in the past. So I'll be honest with myself. It's a little tricky, but I like the tool belt that comes in with Brendan Allen. So I normally don't get into props or anything, but I don't see this fight going the distance no matter yeah. who wins it. Puna has absolutely absurd knockout power. And he does carry it kind of late, to be completely honest. Like, he's not a guy who just goes in there, rushes for that one knockout. He does string together his punches quite a bit. And the fact that he does have a good work rate kind of tells you that he doesn't just have that, oh, kind of burst and then he's done. The weird thing about Brendan Allen, though, is that he can get it to the ground, but he does struggle sometimes when he does go for the takedown. The thing about Brendan Allen is that once he is able to get that takedown to the the ground he doesn't just waste time on top he's got great ground and pound and he uses his ground and pound to soften his opponent up for the submissions you're gonna look at brendan allen you're gonna see a lot of submissions on his record and he's a great submission fighter but when i think about brendan allen and i know i said grappler versus striker Brendan Allen, to me, is kind of, and again, people are going to enjoy this comp, but he does use his ground and pound a lot like Khabib did, where it's, I'm using my ground and pound to soften up my opponent to then move past their guard into side control or mount, and then I'm going to look for the submission. He is really good at softening his opponents up after he gets them down to the mat. So this could be one of those weird fights where it's like Brendan Allen wins the first two rounds but gets knocked out in the third. I'm going to predict Brendan Allen because I do feel like he has the more well-rounded skill set, but I don't have a great read on this fight. For Puna Soriano, seven of his wins are by finish, and all seven in the first round. I find it odd that you think that he has the but same But in the power. Jamie Pickett fight, he showed that he's not a guy who just gets tired one big burst in the first round. I understand a lot of his wins come by first round knockout. That's just because if he lands his power early, there's not a lot of guys who can take that power and continue late. I think with a guy like Brendan Allen, he can at least eat a few of those shots. I do worry about Brendan Allen in that third round. We saw it against Sean Strickland. Who saw is it against Dawkins as well. well. Exactly. But the thing about Dawkins was that he at least grappled with Brendan Allen. I don't think Soriano will have any success grappling with Allen. Just like I don't think Allen will have a lot of success if he just tries to throw bombs in the feet. Again, ever so slightly pick Brendan Allen because if he does need to go to a plan B or if he does need to take this fight to the ground, I think he will be able to. But this fight should be fun for as long as it lasts. I really absolutely do think so. love this one. These guys are uber talented. We're both going ever so slightly with our cousin from Louisiana, Brendan <laughs> Allen, to get the win. No, there's no relation. I love this fight. You let us know down below in the comments section who you have, and we keep on moving. We got big time fights on this card that you're not going to want to miss, so keep it locked in with Fight Name Picks, as we always say. Let's get into it.